morning. Today we are going to talk about colour. Colour is what makes life worthwhile. <laughs> colour is the excitement that is sprinkled onto your art. For every ink drawing, there is a beautiful painting behind it. There could be a beautiful piece of artwork coming from that drawing. But in the same way, you could vision color as the icing on a cake. If you have a fantastic drawing, that color is going to be the icing on the cake. So color can be a little bit tricky. Color can sometimes hide a drawing. So you need to really think about how you're going to use this color. How you're going to feel the color. Are you going to let the ink, the line work, sing? Or are you going to let the color sing? You know, I've, se I've seen some horrible drawings that have become incredible paintings. And in the same way, I've seen some paintings hide and kill a drawing. So today, we're going to look into a little bit of um, color. We're going to paint something up. And what we're going to do is that we are going to explore some of the, 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 the ways of using color. And we're also going to explore some of those, those accents, those kind of accidents that you have. You know, uh, you might make a, a blob or a blotch and how to use them into your artwork. For me, those kind of blotches and, and kind of... Uh, odd marks that you find in your in your color add a lot to the final piece adds a lot of life to it whereas sometimes you've got these kind of um very kind of digital art and it all looks very very flat and perfect well that's great if that's what you're looking for for me i want to feel the character in there I want those those blotches and blobs to sing forward and to tell more about the color, tell more about the character. So today we're going to draw something up and I'll show you some of the methods that I use when I paint, when I paint an illustration, for example. And they will not be your usual traditional ways of doing things um, for the simple reason that I use color in the same way that I use ink, that I use Indian ink, black ink. And I use that in a way to break down some of that fear of using color. And in the same way that sometimes it's difficult to put that first hand down onto a, an, an ink, make that first line when you're drawing. And I, I do a lot of that with color as well. I kind of put down a piece of color and in the in, in the shape of what I want to achieve and then I wait for that color to dry and then I put some ink on top and I start to work some of the, the used colors and the black ink and start to find some kind of balance there and then I start to add paint on later on to kind of finish it off and add some of that that icing <laughs> Um, it's a very different style. Um, you might love it, you might hate it, but for me, it's what expresses the drawing. It brings out a lot of character, my character or the character that's there. It brings out a lot of kind of, uh, surprises and what a beautiful thing when you have some surprises when you're painting and you're drawing and it makes you feel fantastic. So today I'm going to explore a bit of color. We're going to put a bit of color in your life today. All right. So um, I'm going to start with the character and we're going to explore some paint, explore some avenues and see how we also deal with some of those accidents and how we can use them. All right. Let's add some color and have a beautiful day. Well, hello, we're gonna do some color today. 
I've got my new microphone on today, so hopefully things will be a lot more clear. I'm very happy to test it out. Um, so we're going to be talking about color. And this is not a do's and don'ts. This is uh, an opinion, my opinion. And as all kind of advice, it is an opinion, okay? So whatever videos you watch, people are going to be telling you and teaching you, it's an opinion of how to do artwork. It's a, how they feel it works for them. And you can take a little bit of this person and a little bit of that person, a little bit of that person and start to work on yourself. Okay, so it is only an opinion. All uh, advice I see as an opinion. Okay, so there's no fast rules here. What I'm uh, explained a little bit in the in the intro um, basically was that um, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to uh, draw on top of an ink base. Now this is not the finished painting. This is basically me unsure of colors and sometimes I kind of put a little bit of a a color shape down and I draw on top of it then I add paint afterwards to kind of make the full drawing the same way that sometimes I kind of put a mark down on the on the paper with ink to kind of start me feeling good about doing the drawing so this ink is just to soften down some of that that worry and nervousness for myself okay and the one thing about color is that you need to enjoy it. You need to kind of not be so nervous about it. You need to kind of ease yourself into it. Now, this is an idea that I had about doing some kind of fox. I wasn't so sure about what I was going to do with his hands, but I know that I kind of wanted him sitting there looking off um, with a big smile and a big toothy grin or whatever you want to call it. And this was the shape that was in my head. So I threw down some ink and you can see it's blotched. The paint is kind of blotched where I kind of put it down so rough and ready. And I'm fine with that. I like that. I like that kind of loose kind of feeling that it's going to give me. And I'm going to lighten down this part and I'll paint up some features. I've got one ear there. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with the other ear at that point, whether I'm going to have it here or... But this is how the process starts. And I'll, I'll do a little bit more painting later on on the, on the second stage of this. So this is my guide. So I'm just going to draw, as I usually draw, directly on top. And I'm just going to try and get a feeling here of, um, of, of what the character is going to be and how I'm going to, to react to some of this. And this... Um, these kind of blotches and marks on the paper are also going to guide me. They're also going to guide me into a, a new way of looking at this character in a way that maybe I hadn't thought about before. So this is also a very, very, very interesting um, way to draw because, you know, if I was to sit and draw a fox, I would sit and draw a fox like I know how a fox is going to be and what the pose is going to be. But if I start and I put down paint, and what's going to do is it's going to kind of give me a tilt here, give me a bit of a twist. And what it'll do is that it'll make me draw the fox in a very different way than I would normally. So let's just start off and... Um, start with the head because I kind of feel I, I kind of know a little bit more about how I want him to look. The arms, I'm not sure whether they should be kind of on his hips, um, if they should be pointing at something, if they should be reacting to something, if they're eating something. At this point, I'm just kind of exploring it and I'm not quite sure. All right. So... Let's just start in. Around here is where I want the eye. And I'm going to 
kind of drawing my usual mad and crazy style and see see what what it kind of gives me now what that's doing is obviously then I'm going to be painting in this part here a little bit red so that his eyelid is the same color as his body but I kind of like already this idea that that this fox has got this kind of um, excited expression now and that kind of is going to guide whatever the expression comes up with it will probably guide me to what he's going to do with his his hands which is you know that is a lovely i mean the 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 paper is a little bit buckled here and then you should if you're very serious about your um watercolor painting you should kind of tape it down there's lots of videos online about that um for me it kind of helps me to explore what this character is going to look like it kind of gives me a little bit of a an uneven surface to draw on and that's kind of again kind of lets me uh, explore and a lot of my drawings are like that a lot of my drawings are kind of like feeling feeling it as you go and not about setting yourself rules and getting too deep into uh, you know I kind of feel like sometimes you've got all these rules and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that and um, and it kind of limits me mentally and I find that if I feel like I can draw this picture and I, there's no rules I feel like king of the hill you know it's like I can draw whatever I want and that sometimes can be very 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 powerful there is no rules to what I'm going to draw I do not have to anything and that is amazing I love that I love that feeling that I can just go and draw and add anything that I want now I'm feeling there that because of the way the the paint has blotched and the way that my my kind of eye bags have come in there that there's this lovely feeling of a curve and again that's just kind of being guided by the paint and the the ink and I'm going to try and try, try not to break any nibs today I've already gone through quite a few this week And my, my paint has already described some kind of fluffy face to this fox. And again, that's, that's a very exciting, lovely um, feel for this character. And I'm going to follow that. Um, it probably wouldn't be a, a kind of face that I would give a fox. So again, this, the paint is guiding me. And it's kind of giving me a lot of freedom and I love that already it's starting to give me this character that's that's very happy and very fluffy and and now I know that foxes have a lot of white on them as well so I'm going to try and think about how I can add that white and keep it keep it still very fox like And so far, it's coming up very, very, very lovely. I love that. Very blobby today. And I'm, I'm very getting a lovely kind of dynamic feeling there. Let's go in and be brave with the ear. Now, I was a little bit unsure there when I was doing the paint. I know that they have a kind of black end to their ear. And I wasn't so sure about where the other ear was going to be, whether it was going to be there or bringing it forward or tucking it back. Maybe tuck it back would be nice. Maybe the, we've got a space there. We've got a gap there. Could I bring it there? So this is the beautiful thing about it. I've got so much decisions. And what it does is it gets to the point where you're not being driven. 
you don't have this guided pencil line underneath that you have to follow and if I don't follow that it's gonna look like that it's gonna look like this is us just having fun and I've decided I'm going to add it up there I'm gonna kind of keep it enough far away from the eyebrow and I'll paint again now I'll fill that in with a little bit of red ink or paint later on um, this actually is ink it's red ink it is not paint but I will add paint later so if I do say ink and I say ink and say paint I will try and explain where I where I'm using at the moment everything is ink okay that's just painted on with ink and we've got his nose we're gonna bring him all the way down here to a nose and the nose um, wanted a very long kind of spindly type nose to him foxes don't usually have a big kind of round end but I like the idea of this kind of big large bulbous nose at the end and if you see me wiping the the um, the nib onto my hand it is not a technical move it is nothing that you need to learn in <laughs> If I can actually say is, please do not do this disgusting habit, please. Because when it has a little ball of um, uh, paper, sometimes a scratch and it builds up the kind of fluff off the paper and it gets soaked in ink and it makes the end of your ink a big ball. And I wipe it off on my finger. I should have a rag or something in my hand and wipe it off. But over the years, I've just become... Um, what's another word for lazy? <laughs> what what's a beautiful word that it, that doesn't mean lazy but means lazy? What's a prettier word? It's laziness. It's pure laziness. That's all it is. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and I'm going to kind of give him some little spiky teeth. I, I like the I like the idea that foxes have very very spindly teeth and I'm not quite sure if that's truthfully but every time I see a video of a fox they seem to have very very spindly type teeth like you would think my god how can a fox chew anything with teeth that kind of thin and and as you can see here the 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 ink the black ink is actually going in a direction that i want to draw and it's leaving this blotch here um which i don't quite like but i will paint it out later on and um i'll i'll bring in these spindly thin teeth that i've been thinking about and i love that already that's that's got a really nice kind of spindly and at the moment the teeth will be red over this part but we will paint we'll paint that in later on and what this is doing here is it's kind of giving us a lovely kind of very expressive kind of feeling you see me kind of flicking ink sometimes it's just that you get that kind of feeling there that sometimes there's, I put a little bit too much ink on the pen when I'm trying to do thin elements and I've just built up a very bad habit of, instead of wiping off onto a, a rag, I just throw it on the drawing. I've kind of grown to love it over time. I don't, I wouldn't say do it on your drawings. It's quite a messy habit. So you're already seeing that some of my habits are things that you shouldn't do. <laughs> uh, so um, a 
again, you will find lots of artists online and they will all have their own little, I do this and I put my paint in plastic jars and I put ink with a lid on it. I never put a lid on my ink. And um, in, in some cases, when I've spilt it, I think I should, but um, I don't. I just leave it as a jar like that. And that's an old jam jar. Um, I think it was cherry, but it had these lovely little, I don't know if you can see them there. Can I turn it to the light maybe? It's got like a little, like a little ridge and it's just perfect for putting your finger. And it was a little cherry jam jar. And I, I have an absolute terrible habit. I'm, a lot of artists do have this habit, but I almost save every glass jar. Uh, some plastic ones, some tin ones too, but I, I love glass jars. Um, I bought these. I don't know if you can see them, but you'll see them in some of the other videos. There's big, like it's a big wine glass and the, it weighs like about a kilo. One kilo for this kind of big chunky whiskey glass and wine glass. And they they've become my kind of, my kind of overfill of, water and ink and mixes of different gradients of ink and um i love them i'd be lost without them but the big wine one was uh, it was quite i saw it in a in a kind of an antique shop so i shouldn't have bought it there but it was i think it was about 14 pound or something i was like what or a little little cup but very happy with it i'm cheap anyway when it comes to buying stuff you're probably sitting there going 14 pounds that's a good buy <laughs> me i'm too cheap for stuff like that i really um in my mind everything should cost a pound everything should cost 50 pence you know that's why I love charity shops. I love, I love just mingling and mooching around in charity shops and picking up, ah, picking up anything really. Oh, that's nice. Okay, he's starting to get a very nice feeling. I'm starting to feel oranges coming on there on, the, on this side of his nose. Now I'll put a little bit more red at the end and I'll put some like light yellow or orange maybe there. Um, but I need to be a little bit careful about what what colours really a fox are or it might not look like a fox. So, as you can see, this this way of, of actually painting has helped my confidence a lot. It's built my confidence up that I now have fallen in love with this fox. And this fox does not look like how I would have done it. And he simply is not the type of fox I would have drawn and maybe I'll draw a fox later on to show you how I would have drawn him but I mean it could be a fox it could be a wolf I suppose couldn't it yeah that's a kind of interesting let's get him in a bit just leave him in the middle right hands what are we going to do with hands maybe you just have him all kind of cuddled up you know his hands are like up in a little thing i almost kind of feel there's enough space there to, for him to be holding something hmm. i'm really pleased with that if you, if you think it's interesting, let me know. I'd love to know what you're thinking. I love this idea that... That the kind of... The paint is somehow guiding me and, and helping me on in some ways. And in, in many cases, that kind of helps me... Uh, I know a lot of a lot of people have been asking me about fear of drawing and 
fear of making mistakes and fear of doing something wrong and well you know i think this fear is something that you're building up in your own head you know you've got to start to convince yourself that it's fun and it's beautiful and it's amazing and uh and how much you love doing it and that has got to start to convince you that you need to draw more paint more and in my honest opinion and this is honestly my opinion but the best thing you could ever do for like mental health or stress is paint I just find that painting, as long as you're not getting too technical and you're looking at other people and thinking, oh my God, this guy's a genius. I don't want to, oh no, I'm going to throw my painting in the bin and don't, don't get like that. If you're going to paint, you paint, paint for you and only you. I'm very, very, very serious about that. Do not get into this thing if you're if you if you want to paint or you want to paint to sell. Now if you're going to do it because you want to sell it and make millions of pounds, well I don't have much advice for you. I really don't. Um, I mean I make money from my art, but it's not the reason I do it. I, uh, I get money for it because I've got bills, you know, <laughs> same as everybody else. You know, i got bills to pay. Uh, but the reason I do it is pure, pure, pure love. I love it. And if a job came up that paid more money, uh, if it was something to do with me drawing, great. If not, I'm not interested. And that's not to say that my job is better than anybody else's, but for me, it is. And that's kind of nice there. It's got these little cute little arms coming in. Quite nice. I'm not sure. I kind of feel like there's something there, but, you know. What about if we were to draw some, some bees, maybe? Ooh, you like bees, do you? That's kind of cute. So he's looking at these bees, maybe. <laughs> That'll be nice when we drop a bit of yellow in there. Let's just do another couple. So he's looking at these bees thinking, oh, if there's bees, there's honey. That's kind of like the, the same kind of expression of, if there's an artist, there's a mess. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> Let's draw one more. That's a lovely idea. Thank you, whoever put that thought of bees in my my head. <laughs> but that's also something that you should really um, kind of hone in on a little bit. Is that go with your your kind of intuition a little bit. If you're if you're painting something and it says, you know what, I'm painting these bees and there needs to be a fox there follow it i love this idea that that people kind of um follow their mind follow their their feelings and that's i do that a lot with my drawings i just kind of think i want to write a story about a, a whale but then do it i have no idea why i decided to draw a fox i haven't drawn a fox in a very long time I think there's a drawing of a fox on my on my Etsy shop, if I remember. Or did I take it down? I can't remember. 
that's a there's a reminder go into my etsy shop and have a look at some of my um my art prints and postcards and see if there's anything that you you like i've got thousands of well, i've got hundreds of notebooks also um you can go onto amazon and you can see some of my books and um some of my notebooks i've just put up some of my notebooks and i'm really pleased with the notebooks um i think i've put about 200 notebooks so giving him some claws well, that's quite kind of nice some nice feelings coming up there. I'd love to know your comments about the style and the fox and the weather. <laughs> I love foxes. We have a fox here that comes in the garden sometimes. Usually comes quite late at night and then you can see him walking across the, the back fence. Um, he looks quite a young fox so I'm wondering if there's a, like a family of them or whatever. But foxes are beautiful. And if you go on, go on to look up how a fox and see the noise that he makes he makes this lovely little kind of giggling sound it's beautiful absolutely beautiful shame you can't have a fox as a pet because i would love to have a fox i'd like to i mean maybe one day i'll have a dog you know <laughs> Give me somebody to talk to. <laughs> uh, I kind of sit here talking to myself most of the time. That's why these videos, I guess, are just kind of like, um, kind of very straightforward and simple because, I mean, I kind of, you know, artists are um, famously nuts, I think. And, um, kind of find myself talking to myself a lot. What are you going to have for lunch today, Kieran? Oh, I don't know. Do we have any nice cheese? You know? So today we are adding um, color to our day. I know there's been a few people asking me about color and and I don't like to to do kind of direct teaching. Um, I do them more as kind of demonstrations of how I put things together and how I work and how I how I kind of work on a project. What makes me excited by a project? What makes me excited? You know. And this is a lovely starting process. And what I'll do is at this point now, I'll kind of, I'll leave it to dry and then we shall do a, a part two of it. Kind of get some grass in there. But it looks like he's outside. That's nice. I, I'm really pleased with that. So that's the first stage of our um, of our kind of uh, using color, and I'm going to call it using color rather than painting because I don't really feel it's like a a, a lesson in painting, but it's a, more of a lesson about following your inner self and and expressing 
different ways to use color and different ways. I'll do another video later where I'm actually putting down an ink drawing and painting it up so you can see the difference. But today, for now, until this dries, this is our fox. And it'll be a part two of the fox. So you can kind of come in and see how I finish off some of the painting work, painting the tail in, painting the bees, painting some kind of background color. And I'll give you a little bit more um, support and uh, advice or um, thoughts um, a later on. For now and today, that has been the fox. The first stage of, um, I'll try and do a part two when it dries. And um, we'll finish the paint painting off. Okay, for now, today, that's a colorful fox. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for watching. And do subscribe so you can see all the new videos coming up. And pop over to my Etsy shop and Amazon shop if you get time. Thank you very much. And I'll see you all again very, very, very soon. Here's part one of the fox with some bees. Let's get some... Some close-ups there where you can see where all the ink has been blotched and the paint has been blotched. And where it's kind of faded. These little paws. These lovely feet. And that is how he looks all in all. I'm very pleased with it so far. Part one. So I'll follow on for part two. And you'll be able to follow some more of the painting techniques. Thank you very much for following. Thank you very much for watching.